I was lost, but now I'm found. Richard found me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I was there 14. The Lord is. The Lord is giving me something to say today. Isaiah 14. Scripture says, take every thought captive. Into what? Into the obedience of Christ. We have to take every thought captive. If we don't, we we have already lost. We've already lost if we don't take those thoughts captive. How many times have you heard on television where somebody has killed somebody and they say, a thought came to me. This is what I'm supposed to do. It happens all the time. It happens a lot. We tend to follow our thought pattern into an action. If you don't, if you don't, uh, understand what I'm saying, you will in a few minutes here. God wants us to take control of this mind and what My it thinks, the way it thinks. We can, we can meditate on the things of God and good things is just going to naturally flow to us. We can meditate on negative things, things that that we know is not God. And what are we going to do? We're going to end up doing those things that we we're thinking about. The Bible says, "As a man thinketh, so he is." If you think a certain in a certain vein. You're gonna, you're gonna become that. People are raised, you know, and they, and, and sometimes it's not your fault what the thoughts that you have inside of you. Sometimes it's not your fault. You may have been raised in a family where, where your parents say you're stupid. You'll never have anything. You're dumb. You know, you're, you, you know, you can't be my kid. You're so dumb. You know, and stuff like that. Words like that we're producing you if you allow it to wow. and a lot of times when we're a child we can't help it because you know we're, we we don't understand how to fight these battles but when as we grow up what's my, my, my mother and as we become christians and as we start on this journey my, my mother, in, in our christian walk we need to be able Daddy. to we need to be able to uh take control over what we think because whichever way you whichever way you're thinking that's the way you're going to go your 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 uh, your actions and your your direction in your life is going to go identical to what you're thinking 
Right. If you think negative all the time, that's all you're going to have is a negative right. life. Right. I'm just telling you the straight that's truth. Amen. If you think positive, your positive things are going to flow towards you. You can't, you can't separate those two. Because the Bible says, again, as a man thinketh, so is he. We have to take control of our thought life. Our thought life can lead us into violence. It can lead us into all sorts of, of bad things, but it can also lead us into good things. A car by itself is not dangerous. It's the person sitting behind the wheel controlling that car. That's the dangerous one at times. It can if, the, if that person's not responsible. Amen. You get a 15-year-old kid behind the wheel of a 600-horsepower a car and you got a problem on your hand most of the time Amen. unless that child, uh, unless that young, young person is well, responsible. Know. Which goes back to the fact that he's probably thinking good things, thinking responsible things. We have to we have to really gain control over our thoughts. I want to read to you what Webster's dictionary says about wonder. <laughs> it's working! <laughs> See what you saw? Wonder. Is I down there? Oh brother. How many times? How many times have you heard people say, well, wow. I wonder what it's going to do, you know, I wonder what it's going to do. You hear people say that all the time. Betty Jean says it at least a hundred times a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you the straight truth, you know. It, it becomes a habit with us. I, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Here's what, here's what Webster's Dictionary says about wonder, the word wonder. In that context, I wonder what's going to, you know. It means to have doubt mingle with curiosity, have, having doubt and wanting to know. Hey! Having doubt, wait a minute. If you have oh. doubt, you've walked away from the faith, hadn't you? Amen. You've got to have more than that. Just to say a, a simple word like, I wonder what's this. That's being double minded. Amen. That's walking away from what God tells us to do. He wants it. You know, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. That's what the scripture says in amen, Philippians. Amen. We're supposed to have the mind of Christ. What's the deal? We let our minds wander. Paul, Paul said these words. He said, and forgetting the past, I press on to the higher mark. Paul said, forget those things. Do you notice that he didn't tell you to forget the, just the good things or, or the bad things? He said, and forgetting those things. He wants you to forget, forget all of it. Why? Because our mind, God has designed our mind, our subconscious mind. We have something happen in our lives. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. We have a... We have a Say, say, for instance, we have something happen in our life that's really, really a good thing. You know, okay. it brings a lot of joy to us. You know, maybe, maybe we got married or, or uh, met had, had a good friend or whatever. You know, and it's it's a really good moment in your life where you really feel good about. I'll never be that one. Okay. I was never on. So. 
And that's a good thing by itself, right? But when Paul said in forgetting the past, he may not have understood what your subconscious mind is, but it's like a it's like a little storage places. It stores memories of oh, Lord, different Lord, things Lord. that happened. And that, down, down. and that little storage place can have a bad I thing right next to it. So if you allow your mind to travel back in time to that, that thing. It'll cause you to start there. eventually, if you concentrate on that enough, that. even if it's a good good thing, you'll start thinking of other things around that time frame. Then pretty soon you'll start to think about bad things that's happening. And that's why we have to take every thought captive. Into the obedience of Christ, into His, what His Word says about it. We can't let our mind wander. We can't do it. There's a there's a thing that I want us to pray about before I really get into this. It's a spirit of lethargy. In this, in this church where people uh, people just kind of they get into what they think is the anointing and really it's the spirit of lethargy they just you know and God wants me to pray against that right now I come against this spirit of lethargy in Jesus' name. I break its power. You will not stay in this place. I break its power by the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father, that we are awake and alert and know what's going on, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We have to take... You know, a while ago, Gerald and I was back in the back, and I saw this vision of a, a, a train going down the track. And I was trying to figure out what what it, what it meant here. And then I saw uh, one of the rails was off the track. And we were speeding towards that thing. And it was like the Lord says, what do you think is going to happen when we hit that? place where there's no rail. Well, we're going to go off the track. He said, yeah, that's that's right. What else is going to happen? I said, the, play, uh, the train will be out of control. Think about that in terms of where your thought life is. We can get on track and we can, we can refuse to start meditating on it wonder what's going to happen tomorrow and all this stuff but keep our mind stayed on the word of God and what he said amen amen what he's what God says about the whole situation what he said now I'll tell you something this right here will help you stay away from these thoughts of like anger and it can help you stay stay away from the anger and wow. all this other stuff because you won't be meditating on that. That's right. The more you meditate on something, the more you become like it. Amen. Oh, that's a good one. Amen. And pretty soon, your actions will start following that up. I'll give you some good examples. Uh, I'm just going to be plain out and blunt and straight with you today. Uh, years ago, I was in the psychiatric ward. That's where I got born again. I was on my knees in a the, in the maximum security lockup at the VA. I was maximum security lockup because they was concerned about me trying to kill myself. Every now and then, they'd shoot me up with Thorazine or put me in a straitjacket. I was that whacked out. 
There was people on, on my ward that actually killed herself. They actually killed herself on, my, on, on the ward that I was on. You know why? Because of their, they would constantly focus on stuff that happened over Vietnam. They could not get their mind off of things that happen, horrible things that happened in Vietnam. So it led them down a path of self-destruction. I'm telling you, it is a very serious thing not to have control over your thought life. Amen. Amen. You can, you can live a long, healthy, good life just by simply changing your thought life. Amen. Amen. Because if you think something different, if you think positive, your mind is gonna, your mind is is gonna think that way, and your body is gonna line up with it. Amen. If you talk about like my, in one of these places in this book it says, I was come. Kenneth Copeland was talking about his back. His back. He was talking about his back. My back is hurting all the time. My back. My back. My back. And he suddenly realized that his body was lining up with what was coming out of his mouth. Amen. And he stopped that. He realized. And see, that can come in so subtly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't think too much. Satan don't you just know. come up to you and say, I'm Satan. I'm going to cause you to worship <laughs> me and all that. No, he's not going to do that. He's going to find out where your weakness is. Amen. He's going to find that weakness and he's going to start, well, you know, that person, you know, they must not like. That's true. That's right. That's true. They must not like you. Mm -hmm. And then you start looking. Why is that person looking at me? <laughs> you why did I, you why are they doing that? Me. They must not like me. They didn't say nothing to me today. <laughs> they start meditating on those kind of things. Amen. And I'm telling you, when you meditate, whatever you meditate on, you become. Amen. And that's the truth. That's exactly right. I'll tell you what, you know the, the you know the psychiatrist in the ward I was on, they was making bets with one another that if they let me out of that VA hospital, I would go straight to Georgia and kill the mother and dad of of the guy that ran off of my wife. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> no, no, but but see, that's what I had said, and then they, they believed it, and they started making these bets back and forth. From one yeah, yeah. I'm not kidding you. I was so suicidal that my thoughts was on suicide all the time. That I would try to collect enough of my drugs to do me in at one time. <laughs> and I couldn't do that. So in fact, we had a pool pool room, a, a, a pool table on that ward. And why they gave us a pool table was some of the most violent, <laughs> angry people. They had this guy that I got into a pool game with that had killed his dad over a pool game. And I thought, man, there's my way out. All I got to do is make him mad enough and he'll kill me. And he'll take care of the deal and I don't have to take all these drugs. That's the way my mind was thinking. That's the way my mind was running because I just could not cope with what was going on. And I was trying to figure a way to get out of this world. I was, that's what, the way my mind was running. I know it's not the way it should be running, you know. 
I wasn't hitting on all cylinders back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I wasn't. Wow. Thank God. Thank God. Until my mind started being renewed by the oh, word of God, God, I was a mess. I was a mess. And I know for, for a fact, if you meditate on things that are that are not right, that are not lining up with the word of God, that's why he says, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, think on these things. Think on these things. Don't think on these things. Think on these things. That's why people get in trouble. That's why they're standing up there and telling her, oh, this voice told me, you know, to kill my kids, you know, bake them in the microwave. You know, that's crazy. That's crazy, but it happens. Those things happen because of our our thought life and us not having either the understanding how to fight those things. Amen. Amen. It's nothing but the devil trying to take you out. That's it. If you want the devil to take you out, just keep doing what you're doing. He'll do it. He'll take you out. I was right. <laughs> Amen. Right. God. It's good stuff. I needed this. Yes, thank you very much. You know what lasciviousness means? Do you know what lasciviousness means? Let me see if I can find this thing over here. Nasty talk. Hallelujah. I was trying to find that scripture where the city is. Okay, it's in Mark 7, 20. <laughs> See, lascivious, lasciviousness is a, a, a bad thing. I always thought I had it on the hand. Jesus, Jesus includes that along with adultery and fornication and murder. Mark, Mark 7, 20. Mark 7, verse 20 and to 23. Let me get verse. I want to get one Let me read to you out of Webster's Dictionary what that means. Disregarding accepted rules and standards. Morally unrestrained. Morally unrestrained. We have to restrain our mind to conform to God's word. We have to restrain it. Because things happen in our life. God, when we get born again, God doesn't promise us a rose garden. He, he does promise us. In this world, you will have tribulation. You will have problems. But he tells us how to get out of it. Amen. He tells us how to work through those things that are so easily besetting us. I used to have an anger issue. Man, I'm telling you. Y'all would not have wanted to know me when I was younger. I could, you know, I could tell you stories, but I'm not going to because I'm, I'm not going to let my mind run that way, okay? Amen. Just, just know that just know that I, I know what I'm talking about, about this letting your mind wander. You can't let your mind wander. You shouldn't even say the words, I wonder. Let me read that again. The 
definition of wonder is to have doubt mingled with curiosity. Does that sound like the word of God? No. Hallelujah. We have to we have to we have to take control over our thoughts because our actions will follow right along with it. Hallelujah. Lasciviousness, I'll read you something of what Kenneth said here. Lasciviousness works and thought, though it gets far less publicity than things like adultery and murder, in the end it is just as devastating. The truth is, all sin is the same. The devil has just packaged it in different ways. Sexual sins have one kind of ribbon around them. Gluttony has another kind of ribbon around it. But take off the wrapping and all it comes down to is the same thing and that's selfishness. You don't eat the extra piece of pie for somebody else's benefit, do you? Do you, you, you don't cheat on your taxes to help others, do you? You do it for your own sweet self. You don't commit adultery for someone else's benefit either. Every sin begins the same way. It begins with, with the big me. Because predominant in your thinking, either through fear or through pride or through a combination of the two, Ow. leads to sin. It leads to sin. It's all right. Oh. And God said, take every thought captive. And he wouldn't tell us to do that unless he would empower us to do it. Is it easy? No. <laughs> I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna say it's easy. But if God says for us to do it, that means that He has given us the ability to take those thoughts, Cap, to change the way of thinking. How many of you in here still think the same way you did the day you got born again? I don't see no hands up. What's the deal? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes here. And, and I have to take it captive. <laughs> but I'm, I'm talking about it as a general rule. I mean, you don't let your mind run along the same way you did that day oh. you got saved, do you? No. Oh. Hopefully, y'all have grown a little bit. <laughs> oh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, <laughs> you know, we, we have to see. We have to see those things. We have to see what the Word of God says, and we I have to obey God. it. God wants us to obey His Word. It's not for God's benefit, it's for us. Amen. It's for us. He's already got everything right. He don't God don't have any problems. He don't have any anger issues. Unforgiveness. He don't gossip about people. And he's never confused. He's never confused. <laughs> and he's never wrong. Amen. 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 No evil so we, have to, we have to allow God. We have to take this word, every every word in here that tells us how to live our life. And we need to read that and obey it. Amen. Read Bye, and obey. Amen. And I'm, I'm telling you, there have been so many times in my life that I could have done some things that would cause me not to be here today. I would be either dead or in prison. I was angry 
because my wife took off with all my kids. Ex-wife. Okay. But, but I was mad about that. I didn't see my kids for 17 years. But I was, I was, I wasn't angry at that guy. I could have slept it off. But I had all these other things piled up in my life that I just kept dwelling on. Kept thinking about. You see, somebody can say something to you 20 years after you've been offended or hurt. And you end up hurting somebody else and they don't even know why. Amen. Amen. That's why we have to. We have to take those thoughts captive. We have no choice if we're going to follow God. We have no choice but to do that. We are commanded by God to love one another. To love God with all of our heart. And to love one another as we love ourselves. We have to do that. That is a commandment. That's not an option. It's not an option. We have to. But this thing about how to discipline your flesh. <laughs> It's a good book. Amen. It's a very good book. It gets you to think it. And, and God wants us to walk in a way that is so pleasing to Him that if, if we see somebody that has a need, maybe a healing, Maybe they need another leg. Maybe their leg had been cut off. And God wants to grow that leg out. And his eyes are roaming to and fro all over the earth looking for somebody that he can show himself strong in. And he looks at us. Well, I can't use them. They're, they're uh, walking in the flesh too much. I don't want to get to heaven and God tell me that I couldn't use you, Richard, because you had this deal going on in your life and you wouldn't let it go. We need to lay all that stuff down, start fresh, and allow God to show us what he wants us to do. We need to lay it all down. It's not worth it. Your walk with God is more important than anything else because it not only involves you, it involves people all around you. You don't do anything. You don't say a hurtful word to somebody and it's just one other person. Because if that person takes that offense and they get offended, they're going to, you know, offended people will offend other people. Yes. Because they allow that to, to get in their their uh, emotions and everything, and they won't let it go. So that eventually comes out too. He just builds up one thing on top of another, on top of another. And and God's word says that we can overcome all that stuff. We got to do it his way. We have, we have, we don't have a choice if we're going to follow God. We got to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's see if I. Thank you, Jesus. Remind me. Protect me. Hallelujah. Let me read this scripture. It's Hebrew 12, 1. <coughs> Wherefore, seeing we are also are 
compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. Now listen to this. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. The battlefield is in your mind. Uh -huh. That's the only that's the only weapon weapon Satan can can get on you is in your mind. Because Jesus defeated and he wants it once and forever uh, settle the situation with your spirit man when you got born again. But for some reason or another, God left us to deal with our flesh. <laughs> but I, th I think I think God did that for a reason. I know He did. He wants to demonstrate to Satan that He can raise up a bunch of Christians that will stand up in Satan's face and say, "No, I'm not going your way." Amen. I believe that God did it. God did that so that we could be strong. He's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. Amen. Amen. He's not coming back after a bunch of wimps that won't stand up and fight for what's right and do what's right. Amen. He's not, he's not going to come back for those. And I'm telling you, he, when he said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, you know it takes, uh, in clothes, it takes pressure and it takes heat to get the wrinkles out of cloth. Yeah. Sometimes we're under pressure. Sometimes we're under the heat of things. But God is iron in the south. Yes, he is. It'll be over. Things will cool off after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. God is so good, you know. All we got to do is just get out of the way and let Him do it. Let Him have, let Him have total reign in our hearts. Let let the Bible be the absolute. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? The last word. Huh? The last word. Yes, that's good. Let, let, the, let, let the Bible be the last word that settles our every thought and our every action. I, I don't I want to be a person that pleases God. If I make some people mad at me, Oh well, that's okay. I'm gonna please God. Amen. Because He's the one that died for my sins. He's the one that's making a way for me to go to heaven. So, I will just know y'all from just a vapor anyway. Amen. <laughs> it's just a vapor. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, I, th I thank you, Lord, for helping us, Lord. Help us, Father, to overcome these issues in our life, Lord. And help us to lay down things, Father, that so easily besets us, Father, and so easily turns us from the way you want us to go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your peace in our life, Father. 
Thank you. Help us, Father, to serve you with a whole heart. Amen. With a heart that's Amen. turned towards you, Father. Amen. Help us to forgive those, Father, that, Amen. that we have held unforgiveness with, Father. Amen. Help us, Lord, not to be gossiping about one another. Amen. But help us to be people that are known to be uplifters, people that will encourage each other with the Word, with what the Word says about it, what the Word says about the situation. Father, help us, Father, to walk in a way, Father, that pleases you and pleases the Father. Lord God, we praise you, Father. Help us in our love walk, Father. That the love of Christ is so strong in us, Father God, that it disarms all anger and wrath and bitterness in other people, Father. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father, to always speak the truth in love, Father. Let your love be the uh, be the starting out point, Father, that everybody sees first in you, Father. That the love they see that love walk, Father. Help us, Lord, to be strong in you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Your miracle working power is working to everybody that hears this. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in our lives, Father. Thank you, Father, that you bring peace and joy into our lives, Father. Help us to be strong Christians, Christians that love one another, Father, care about one another. Jesus. Amen. If you're not saved, if you don't know the Jesus we've been talking about, I want to encourage you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. One one question you can ask yourself, if I died today, would I go to heaven? And if you can't honestly answer that with a pure heart, then pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. I asked you to forgive me of my sins and wash me white as snow in your precious blood. Thank you, Father, for making heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, praise God. Call us. Call us.